when I first started learning JavaScript, modules and that topic was the most confusing thing ever for me. I had a really tough time getting a grasp of the concept. It took me a year to actually get it. But I've created a mental image in my head to understand it better. And as we do in this course, we first start with the problem, then go to the solution that we have now to see where we were and where we are now. This is the mental model that I've created, and I call it climbing the mountain of modules. Let me explain. When we first started writing JavaScript and creating websites with JavaScript, well, we had an HTML file. And the very first time people were using JavaScript, you used a script tag and what we called an inline script. An inline script is exactly that. We just inline all of our JavaScript within the HTML file. Now, there's problems that I see with this. Imagine this getting massive, a massive JavaScript file, hundreds and thousands of line of code. One is the lack of code reusability. And you'll hear this term a lot. If we need to add another page, maybe an about.html page, well, we have to copy this code and put it into the other HTML file. And the second was the pollution of the global namespace. And that is, once I use up A as a variable, in this case, in the window object, well, I can never use A again. And maybe hundreds of lines down, by mistake, I assign a variable A and I erase my A function. Well, that's a huge problem. And that's a big problem in general. You want to make sure that you don't pollute the global namespace, that is, the window object with all these names, because then you'll have collisions. You have different team members working on different pieces of the code, and all of a sudden, we both come up with the same name. It's a big problem. The next attempt was script tags. And this is something we've been familiar with. Instead of having inline, we had script tags. And when we played around with Bootstrap and jQuery, this is what we did. We had our jQuery file loaded first, then our JavaScript file loaded second. And as you can see, we can have one script file, then the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one. This way, you have everything outside of the HTML. Solves the problem, right? Well, the problem with script tags, as far as I can see, are three things. If we need to add another page, like an about page, well, we still have to copy and paste this script tags. And again, we don't really want to do that. The second one is the lack of dependency resolution. And that is, you're responsible to make sure that the scripts are added in proper order. For example, if this script accesses a function from the number 4.js file, well, it's going to fail because the number 4.js file hasn't loaded yet. So that's lack of dependency resolution. And finally, the third, this doesn't really solve the global namespace problem, right? It's polluting the global namespace. All the functions and variables that are declared in each of these files will be on the window object. OK, so what about the third attempt, the IIFE? That stands for Immediately Invoked Function Execution. I know that's a mouthful, but it looks something like this. An ify is it actually wraps a function in brackets so that JavaScript reads this and says, oh, I have to evaluate this and execute this. And then these brackets at the end says, run the function. So after you evaluate this, run this function. And it was a confusing way to make sure of one thing. And that is, by using this method, you don't pollute the global namespace. Now, if in the first file you have variable my app, that'll be on the window object. But everything else that's inside a function, as we know, creates a new scope. So all the files, because they are wrapped in this ify, had their own scope. And if you wanted to add to my app, you just added everything as a property or a method. 
So awesome, that reduced our global namespace to just one. I mean, it's not zero, but the one, that's, that's a lot better, right? But there is still one issue with this. The order of the files are still important. And I've worked on apps before where we're using so many scripts that this was close to 100 script tags. And every time you added a file, you had to make sure that you added it in the right place because that file might be dependent on another file loading before it. So as we know, that's lack of dependency resolution. And frankly, this doesn't look very pretty. So then we had Browserify, this nice looking logo. Now, what did Browserify do? It actually used something called CommonJS. So I'm gonna comment the iffy out and show you what Browserify did. It used CommonJS, which allowed us to use a certain syntax. And it looks something like this. If I wanted to have on my first JavaScript file, a function add, I can say module.exports. And now in the second JavaScript file, I could require the add, let's fix the strings here. And now I can add add function into my JavaScript two file. Now, Browserify used this common JS syntax, but it's actually a module bundler. And what does that mean? Well, it runs before you put the website online. What that means is it reads through all the JavaScript files, reads through all the syntax, and it bundles everything into a single file. Once you run all the files through Browserify, and again, it's just a simple tool that allowed us to just dump all our script files, all of these, into Browserify, and as long as we use the common JS syntax like this, it will know what to do and automatically create one file. It will usually be called something like bundle.js. So all our scripts will just be on one massive file. And yeah, that might be bad when we're actually developing, but when it's out on the internet in real world, we don't really care how it looks because we're just doing this to send it somewhere to a server so that the web app can be viewed by users. This is not what it's actually going to look when developers are working on it. When developers are working on it, we just have our own separate files. We just run it through Browserify right before we deploy, that is put it out to the public. All right, so that was pretty cool. And we're getting closer to the top of the mountain here. Now, all of these problems here, it was all because JavaScript didn't have what we call a module system built into the language. And think of modules as building blocks, as different pieces of code. So instead of having one giant thing, you have modules. Each piece is really, really good at doing one thing. And because JavaScript didn't have this module system, it's the reason we have so many different ways of importing and exporting modules. And there's actually quite a few more that I didn't show because, well, frankly, it'll just be too much. But things have recently changed. With the introduction of ES6, we can now do something a lot nicer. And it looks something like this. With ES6, we have two new things, export and import. For example, in JavaScript one file, I can have a function, and you can see that I'm using arrow functions here, an add function, and I simply export it. Or I can even do export default. In the second file, if I wanted to use the add function, all I say is import, and then we see here the destructuring. You might remember this from the ES5, ES6 video. And we're simply just grabbing add. Or if the export was default, which means with this, you can export multiple functions in the same file versus here, you can only export one thing. So the file only exports one thing. Well, in that case, we don't need the little brackets. We can just do add from add file. Very cool. So 
that's nice. That reads pretty nicely. We just put the imports at the top. So each file, we know exactly what each file needs and everything is clean. Everything works and we don't have to worry about any of this stuff, right? Well, yeah, kind of. As you know by now, and I feel like a broken record, browsers aren't supporting everything yet because it's a new feature. Again, we're still waiting on browsers to implement them. But this is what this blue thing is for. It's called the Webpack. And Webpack, just like Browserify, is a module bundler. That is, it bundles modules, which is bundles JavaScript files. And just like Browserify, it traverses the dependency tree, which is these export and import tags, into a single file, or it can even have multiple files based on your needs. And with Webpack, we can actually use ES6 in all browsers. Isn't that awesome? This is where we are now. We've climbed the mountain of modules, and we have a really, really good system right now in JavaScript. It was really hard getting there, but we're in a good place right now. So this is what we're going to be using, and this is what the industry is using. Get used to the syntax. I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can check out more. But when we get to React, we're going to be using this a lot. And it's going to be a ton of fun. It's going to make things really nice and clean for us. One thing I wanted to show you. You might think, hey, this Webpack thing seems like it's kind of hard. Like, how does it do it? It's very simple. It just has a config file, just like this. As you can see, we just have an output that is bundle.js. And we don't need to worry too much about it. Usually when somebody's starting a project, it's one person on the team that configures this file and everything is done. The rest, you just build on top of. It's very, very simple to get started. I don't think it's super important for us to tackle right now. But again, a very, very useful tool. And it creates a nice bundle.js file. So now all our HTMLs look nice and simple. And you know what? That's it. We've covered some of the most important topics in JavaScript and some really, really hard topics. And I know your brain is hurting from all this information, but you've done it. We've finished this section and previous sections, and now we can actually build amazing apps with the tools that we have. Can't wait to show you how all these pieces come together to build something amazing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.